Donald Trump's former national security advisor, Mike Flynn, who pled guilty for lying to the FBI, continuing to push to try to get those charges dropped, even though he already pled to them initially. The judge in the case appointed to a special attorney here to weigh in on whether Bill Barr's Justice Department is wrong to reverse itself in this prosecution from the Mueller probe. Now, as Flynn fights to avoid sentencing, another convicted felon and former Trump advisor, Roger Stone, apparently sees some benefit in now publicly arguing that he thinks he is like Michael Flynn. I would say both General Flynn, who I consider a great American patriot, and I are uh, the subjects of a political vendetta. This president needs to be reelected, Lou. He's the greatest president in my lifetime. I would never give false testimony against him. We are joined by John Flannery, a former federal prosecutor who is one of the more than 1,000 DOJ veterans who signed on to that brief. We've discussed it on air. Good to see you. Starting with Roger Stone. Look, He says this is the greatest president in his view in his life. And that's saying something because he is a big Nixon fan with a literal tattoo of Richard Nixon on his back. And now by his book, Trump's uh, even better. John, I let you sink into that before we get into the law. Well, you know, we have two scoundrels here. We have Stone and we have Flynn. And there isn't any buddy with a reasonable mind who would think otherwise. And they and, you know, Stone. Having been convicted, you got to give him the award for chutzpah. He comes on saying that, uh, oh, I'm as innocent as uh, as Flynn is. And Flynn twice said he was guilty, which I would think would be even stronger than what Stone did. He had to be convicted of uh, 12 persons and a jury. So, uh, yeah, uh, so you I make think a, that these guys live you make in fiction an, and they hope that power will truth. Yeah, you make a distinction that's important here, which is Stone, uh, what everyone thinks of him, he, he was consistent. We've reported that. He maintained his innocence. Uh, he maintained that he viewed the entire effort as an attempt to squeeze him to say negative things about the president that he said were not true. Um, and, and he was consistent. Now, he was convicted. Um, but he is different than Flynn in that way. As you point out, he's now trying to consort with Flynn because Flynn appears to be getting special treatment. Maybe Stone is hoping for the same from this administration. But uh, Flynn came out and said, oh, my God, you're accusing me of multiple felonies, potentially, including a financial alleged financial crime involving Turkey. So I'll plead to one thing. And he did plead guilty. That's the difference between them. Let me read from this brief for you to explain to us where this story is headed. We've been taking it in pieces on different nights. Um, But in challenging the Bar Justice Department, you write, it's a brazen attempt to protect an ally of Trump. The dismissal appears to serve Trump's personal political interests rather than the interests of the public. Um, How does that argument work in court? Uh, to reverse or stop, as you hope to do, the Justice Department saying, we changed our mind, we withdraw the prosecution. Well, I'll try not to be too much of a policy wonk, but the rule that's at issue here is Rule 48A and B. And it's a rule that says the prosecution can move to dismiss a case with the leave of the court, meaning the court has to exercise its discretion. So it's not enough to say, oh, we, the almighty Department of Justice, want to have this case dismissed. It has to be with the leave of the court. And what's the standard? Is it in the interest of the public to grant that dismissal? Well, this is a judge who's heard... Let's pause. May I pause with you there? Heard the first round of years. I'm going to pause you. And you you move so fast, I I I would be nervous to be in your law school course because... You're jumping ahead to part two, but on part one, let's just be clear. You're on you're you're underscoring that at the beginning of the road, it's all the prosecutors call. Uh, It is a fact that not every potential crime in America is charged. Prosecutors make decisions. They involve judgment. And sometimes you say we're going to go after this person and not that. And that's the balls in their court. And what you're saying is once they go forward, the FBI found this information Mueller prosecuted it. Flynn pled guilty. Now the ball is in the judge's court. So what everyone thinks about this case, you're saying it's a matter of law that the judge decides this, not necessarily Bill Barr saying, oh, I disagree with everyone underneath me at the DOJ. I disagree with Sessions who recused. I disagree with Rosenstein who moved forward on this. I want to take it back. You're saying there's no backseas without judicial approval. Right. Well, think about it. It's a motion. They're asking permission to do something. Otherwise, they just give notice to the court and say, yeah, we've decided to dismiss this case. And the judge would have no role. 
So that makes no sense. And in many cases, uh, the judge agrees with it. There's no dispute. But here we have a special case. We have a transparent political syndicate that pushes false propositions, scares off career officers who are prosecuting the case, and then contradicts what's been said for years. And those contradictions are rightly the subject of an inquiry by the court saying, did he commit perjury? Is this contemptible? What should I do about it? And what should I be doing about the Just Us Department, that they could do this and come mm. in and make some law, some argument that is it material or not, when it plainly is that a national security advisor is having secret meetings with the Russian ambassador undermining our sanctions about their interference in our last election four years ago. So that, that's a, that's the picture, I think, of the case. And they've gone to the Court of Appeals because they can't wait. You know, it's interesting that Sidney Powell praised this judge for how he routed out corruption in the Justice Department in the Ted Stevens case. And now, maybe because she knows how strong he is, she's afraid that he's going to just do the right thing here. And, you know, to borrow that line from the movies, uh, you can't stand the truth. Well, he hasn't made a decision handle. yet. So they're getting ahead Flannery. of their argument. It's you can't handle the truth. Yes. You want me on that wall. You, you need me on that truth. wall. What did I say? I think you said stand. I do. I put you on that. Oh, OK. Well, you uh, can't stand the well, truth. You uh, however you want to get to the formulation, the truth is alien to this group of criminals that well, are in the Justice Department. The, and the courts, and counsel, the courts will desperation will try to <laughs> It's my job as a journalist to say the courts will decide who the criminals are, but but you're you're a, a strongly worded litigant and you can say what you want, uh, uh, freedom of speech on the beat and a, a, around the nation. Uh, but you're, you're you're hitting two quick things. I'm running out of time, but you're, you're citing the judge's history, which is important. You mentioned Ted Stevens, who was a very prominent, very powerful Republican senator, right. uh, and there was findings that prosecutors withheld material against him. That was unfair. It doesn't matter whether he was a Democrat or Republican. It was deemed to be unfair. And you're mentioning that the judge took that on, uh, which can be hard right. for judges because generally at a distance, the public says, well, if a politician looked dirty, that's enough. When in fact, and many politicians do seem dirty, but uh, the law requires more. And you say that there was that fairness and it was obviously nonpartisan. Before I let you go here, uh, real quick, on a scale of uh, one to 100%, the odds you think you will win in this case now that you're part of the group litigating it? 110. Well, John, that's that overstatement's going to undermine your credibility. We'll play this back I'll, to you I'll no matter what it. happens. I'll take the chance because this is the most outrageous misconduct of Justice Department in my lifetime. And we've had some pretty outrageous things happen. Well, John Flannery, uh, a pugnacious uh, lawyer that I look up to. They, they call for zealous advocacy. Maybe that's where you found the extra 10 percent, a, a mathematical impossibility. We'll see you again, John. Thank you. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here or better yet. Subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us and we appreciate that.